There's a question I've had in the back of my mind for a while now about how much ambient temperature change affects our gunpowder. Uh, how much velocity difference should we expect when shooting a particular load in freezing weather versus when we're shooting that same load in 100 degree weather? Also, are some powders more susceptible to this change than others? Um, are hot bullets really hot or, or not? So I've decided to set up a little experiment. I'm going to load up several different loads and shoot them from several different guns and some of the rounds will be left in the sun before I shoot them and some will be left in the freezer. Then we'll compare the results and see if we can learn anything from it. I've decided to run today's test with four different revolvers. For 38s, I'm going to use my Ruger LCR which has a 1 and 7 8 inch barrel. I'm also going to use my Taurus 66 which has a 4 inch barrel uh, for both 38s and some 357 Magnums. For 44 specials and magnums, I'll be using my Smith & Wesson model 69 with its 2 and 3 quarter inch barrel and the Smith & Wesson 29 with the 6 and a half inch barrel. All of the 38 and 357 rounds will be loaded with um, this Lee 158 grain bullet. For the 38 specials, I have these loaded up with uh, 4 grains of unique. And then for the 38 Special Plus P, I have these loaded with 5.2 grains of unique. For the 357 Magnums, I have these loaded with 15.5 grains of H110. And they also have um, uh, Magnum primers. I've had these loaded up for a couple of years now. They're traditionally lubed, not um, powder coated. For all of the 44s, I'm going to load these uh, Lee round nose flat point bullets. These particular bullets cast out for me at 210 grains each. I'll load the pink bullets into special cases uh, with five and a half grains of E3. You won't find any published load data for E3 but it performs very similar to red dot only slightly faster. I'll load the white bullets into special cases with 7.2 grains of unique and I'll load the gray bullets into special cases with 15 grains of 2400. I'll also load the gray bullets into magnum cases with 23 grains of 2400. Those magnums should be fun in the little 69. My predictions are that the temperature will affect velocity and will affect some powders more than others. I expect the higher temps will lead to higher velocities and the higher temp rounds may even be more consistent, meaning lower uh, extreme spread and standard deviation. I also predict this limited test will leave us with more questions than answers, but I guess we'll see. All of the 38s and 357s are loaded, but I still need to get the 44s loaded up. I won't bore you with all that today. Uh, I'll cut here and bring you back to the range, and I'll show you a bit of the range time. I'll probably end up cutting most of that out as well. Um, after the range, we'll come back and pour over some of the numbers to see if there's anything that can be learned. These are the light 38s, the blue, uh, frozen blues here. Plus P, the red, frozen for the LCR. Seven from the tours. Hold.
Pretty smart special. <laughs> Forty-four special pink gold from the model sixty-nine. Forty-four special pink hot. Forty four special gray hot from the model twenty nine. Special gray cold from the spot sixty nine. Four special white cold from the model 69. Ooh, this is going to be fun for the Model 69. 44 mag hot for the Model 29.
It's got some punch to it. Well, I'm happy to report that I didn't break my wrists. Shooting those 210 grain bullets in the Little 69, or the Noisy Cricket as I've come to call it, at uh, 1450 feet per second wasn't something I wanted to do over and over again every day, but it wasn't too bad either. And the 44 Specials are a real pleasure to shoot out of that gun. So, can we learn anything from all this? Here's how scientific this test was. Before I shot any of these bullets, I did a couple of my hollow point gel tests. While I was shooting and filming those, I opened the ammo boxes for the hot bullets and set them out in the sun. The cold bullets were left in the freezer overnight and then I put them into a cooler with some ice packs uh, to take to the range. The hot bullets were definitely warm to the touch and the cold bullets were definitely cool to the touch. The ambient temperature and the hot revolvers were the same for all of the rounds. This is a pretty small sample size, but we can notice a few things here. For the loads with Unique, we have some where the hot bullets were faster and some where the cold bullets were faster. Also, the extreme spread and standard deviation numbers were all over the place. It's hard to make any conclusions based on the Unique information. For the 44 Special loads with E3, there was only a very small difference and in both, the hot bullets were faster, but by less than 10 feet per second. For the 357 Magnum H110 load, as well as the 2444 Magnum load, the cold bullets actually averaged 2 to 3 percent faster than the hot bullets, which is not what I had expected. The extreme spread and standard deviation for the H110 was horrible, but that was the case for both the cold and the hot samples. The 15 grain 2444 special load saw the hot bullets at 2 to 3 percent faster. So there's lots of data here, uh, but nothing I would call conclusive. Can we come to any conclusions? I think so. First, is gunpowder sensitive to temperature swings? I say yes. Are some propellants more temperature sensitive than others? Again, I say yes. And finally, where this really might actually matter, are the velocity changes caused by different temperatures enough to change the point of impact at hunting ranges and cause a miss on an animal? And to that I say, the issue is real, but it's small enough that it won't take you outside of minute of deer if shooting 300 yards or less. Um, I didn't do any testing with rifles or frozen firearms, and there's a lot more that can be done before we could call any of this conclusive. But the only scenario I can think of uh, to really watch out for is if you develop an absolute max load in freezing weather, and then go shoot that same load in extreme heat the pressure increase could get into dangerous territory, maybe. Other than that, I think we can acknowledge that velocity will vary a little with changes in temperature and then not worry about it unless we absolutely have to. Well, I hope you enjoyed all this and I really appreciate you watching. God bless.